This is Photo Walkthrough, episode number 121, tutorial 18, chapter 3. Hello and welcome back to Photo Walkthrough Tutorial 18. This is Chapter 3, the final chapter of our Dragonizing tutorial. And this is the one where the magic happens and re it really makes it look gritty and dragonized. That real, that real sort of oily looking, interesting, high contrast, gritty look that Andre Dragon gives a photograph. So um, before we jump into that, I'd just like to say a very quick thank you to our regular show sponsors, Angie's List. Remember, if you're looking for somebody to do work on your house or your car or a healthcare professional in your area, Area, and you'd like to read reviews of other people that have used those guys in your area, head over to angieslist.com and use the promo code PHOTO when you check out to get a 25% discount on your subscription. It's a really great service and I'd like to say a massive thank you to Angie's List for supporting the show. They really do make this all possible. Remember you can also get an HD copy of this tutorial in its entirety with no ads, no interruptions. Download it live and just watch it whenever you like. Burn it to a DVD if you wish um, and you you can buy that by going to photowalkthrough.com and looking for tutorial 18. Look for the download and buy buttons and they will allow you to buy this tutorial for three dollars. You can buy, you can pay more if you wish. Um, that will be up to you. It's just another way of supporting the show and all those little contributions do help very much to keep the show going. So thank you very much to those of you that have, uh, have already donated or have bought something. Remember you can also help the show out. If there's nothing you want to buy from any one of our sponsors, you can also help the show out by passing the promo codes around. Post them on your website, give them out at your camera club, put it, email them to your friends, whatever you want to do, just get those promo codes out there because the more they get used, the more money we make and the more, the more photo walkthrough shows I can produce. So thank you very much to, for supporting the show. Let's get started with tutorial 18, chapter 3. So I'm going to not fret too much about that. Um, because the next step is to put in, I mentioned a, uh, a sepia toning layer. Um, actually, it's a photo filter layer. So a new adjustment layer, photo filter. And you can see that by default, the photo filter that it will choose for you is actually this warming filter. Now, this is an 85 warming filter. It is, um, a, a, it's actually a physical filter number that you can go out and buy an 85 filter and it'll be a warming filter like this. So we're trying to emulate a real-world glass filter here. Um, so I actually want to make it a, a more dense filter than that. So I'm dragging the density up to 40%. Now you can see that's given us a sort of an orangey tone to the image. Um, w whether or not that suits your taste is up to you. This this is something I think that suits the dragon uh, dragon style. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to leave this 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 orangey tone to uh, in the image there and. Uh, I, I think it, it suits the image. I think it gives it a, a, a sort of a slightly surreal look. Um, and it also warms those skin tones a little bit, which is uh, not a bad thing. So we've got um, the first three steps of our dragonizing. First step is boost the contrast, then sort out those colors, and then give it a sort of a, a, a slightly warm uh, overall tonality um, uh, or tint. Uh, and now the uh, the next step is going to be to do that sharpening effect that is so characteristic of the dragon dragon effect. So I'm going to take my background layer. This is the background layer that, that we started with. And I'm going to drag it to the new layer icon. And that's going to duplicate it. So we've now got this background copy. Now I want to drag that all the way to the top of my layer stack. So it's the, on the top. So now we can all we can see is that background copy. And I'm going to, first of all, run a high pass filter on this. So I'm going to go to the filter menu and I'm going to choose other high pass. Now we've got this radius that we can choose here that, that changes the effect. Let's just put this alongside and you can see that what it's doing is it's sort of edge detecting. Anywhere where there's bright next to dark um, it's going to sort of give us this this uh, uh, detail and anywhere where it's generally even and flat we just get grey. So where there are stronger contrasts in the image, we get um, uh, black and white uh, visible de detail, uh, and anywhere there's weak contrast, we just get flat grey. Um, so this is this is the way that uh, sharpening tends to work as well. So this is basically a sharpening technique. Now what I'm after is quite a strong effect, and as you see, as I, as I drag this radius up, you can see the colour starting to come in. We've got some red here, we've got a, a fringe of cyan there, and we're going to need to sort that out. We've got a bit of orange coming in here. We're going to need to sort that colour that fringing out, 
Uh, but what I'm after at the moment is um, to try and get the detail in those areas where I want detail. So I'm looking for detail certainly in the beard. There should be that should sort of pop and, and in the hair and around the eyes and around the mouth. Um, and I will be a bit selective about where I use this detail. So in this case, I'm going to choose somewhere in the region of six, and I'm going to press OK. That's just operated on this one layer. If I turn that layer off, we can go back to where we were. Um, that we're still working on this one layer. The next step is going to be going to in the image menu adjustments and I want to desaturate that layer and that will remove that red that was showing through here and the cyan that was alongside it. So we've now just got a plain black and white high pass filter layer and I'm going to set the blending mode of that once again, this is the hard light show this tutorial, once again to hard light. And what that's going to do is, let's let's look at what it does close up. Um, if I turn the layer off, you can see that's where we were before. Everything looks a little softer now, doesn't it? I turn it back on, and it really pops up that detail. Um, if we want to go even stronger, we could go to Vivid Light, and that makes the effect even stronger. Um, and let's just look at what it does to the eyes and stuff. I, I think this is one of the things that most of the, the Dragon tutorials out there go a little bit too too heavy on. Personally, I, I would I would back it off a little, um, and maybe even back that off just a little more. Um, or the alternative is to leave it strong and paint out the areas that we don't want to be too too much. So let's let's do that. Let's go for a full opacity and bring in. A, uh, a dodge, uh, sorry, a masking layer. This is a um, uh, just a regular um, add a mask layer, um, and I'm going to grab my tablet again, and I'm going to. What I want to do is, if you see th this, this, this has introduced certain halos. Um, so the uh, the hard light of the of the um, the high pass layer there uh, is is going to in certain places make halos. So with the layer mask selected, um, I'm just going to paint black on the layer mask, and that will conceal the effect of this layer. And I'm just going to just take out those halos that are showing around the edge of the hair there. Um, I'm going to diminish these areas here because it's made it a little over bright. Uh, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to remove the the detail that is brought in in the skin here. I mean, it's it's not desperately attractive, but that is that is a dragon sort of style. Um, I don't think we've got much in the way of halos elsewhere. Maybe a little there. No, not so much. Um, now this is where we need to go back to our dodge and burn layer because now that we've got our dragonizing layer in effect. Now is when we really need to make this look the way we want it to look. So let's take all of those dragonizing layers. That's the high pass layer, the photo filter layer, the hue saturation layer, and the high contrast curves layer. Um, and we'll group those. And this time, instead of pressing the group button down here, I'm going to press Command or Control G, and that groups those. And we'll call those uh, just by double clicking on the name there. Dragonize. Okay, so that's our dragonizing layers, and we can open and close that. And we've got our dodge burn layers. Um, and now I'm going to go back to my dodge burn layer here, which is the uh, soft light layer. It was the second one we did after we did the hard light layer. Um, and I'm going to start just trying to put a bit of shape into this image now. So once again, with brush, I'm going to choose black and white. Uh, first things first, I, I, I like the way that we've got this sort of low light on the temple of my face there. I'm just going to paint a little black in just to bring that up. Um, I'm going to just zoom in a little and look at some of these shadow areas. I'm going to press X to get white. And I'm going to just paint a little bit of white in here just to bring a bit more detail back in those areas. But, uh, but not too much. I, I want to make sure there's contrast. I'm going to just boost up some of these shapes in the face just to try and give it that sort of 3D look and and really I hate to say it make me look older like I know like I need a lot of help with that um, but just really emphasize those areas that uh, that give the image a bit of shape so 
just darkening around the edge a little there, just to give a bit of light fall off as we go around the corner towards the distance. So if I can just make that line in the forehead a little bit more visible. Just a tiny bit. These, these are small edits, but they all add up. And this, this arm is still overly light. I might even go back to the dark light, the, the hard light layer. And once again, I'm going to press, I want a, a low flow, so I'm going to press 2 on the keyboard to get 20%. And press lightly on my graphics tablet, just to darken that down a little more. Now you see, before when I did this, it, it went grey. Now that we've got uh, a few layers over the top, we've got our dragonizing layers and the photo filter layer and things like that, <coughs> we're, uh, it's now sort of going a, a nice orangey colour when I do this. So it's less bad than it, than it was um, to, to use that hard light layer. Um, and I think just a couple of face, regions on the face where I think the hard light needs, needs using. Um, so I'm still on the hard light layer here, and I'm just giving the face a little bit of shape. Taking off some of those highlights. And then back to the soft light layer with a white brush, just to make sure that we keep the detail where we need it. And I think that there is not about... Oh, we've, there's an eye. Let's just bring back some of that detail in the eye again. It bugs me that you can't see the pupil of this eye. You see, so just that little bit. We've got the we've got the hi, we've got the the highlight in the eye, which is uh, necessary just to give it a bit of life. But I just want to be able to see just a little bit of colour there. Um, I think overall that's not bad. I think the final step might be just to take the 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 whole dragon eyes group and drag the opacity of that down a little. Um, and let's just see what happens if I mess with the. I think the. This is the the evening light group. is not bad. I think I might just bring up. Remember, one of these layers, the last layer we did in there was a background lightness layer. I think I might just bring that up just a little, back up to 100%. Um, and I'm I'm pretty happy with that as a finished as a finished product. Uh, that's my stab at how you would do a uh, um, a dragonizing effect in Photoshop CS4. Um, I hope you find that useful and I hope if you've got uh, another product you'll be able to uh, work those effects and those techniques into, uh, into how your product works. Um, and I will be uh, happy to see you in the next tutorial. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Okay, that's tutorial 18, chapter 3 done, and that's all of tutorial 18 done. I hope you found that useful. I hope that was something a little bit special and a little bit different than uh, than what we've seen before, because this is genuinely a tutorial. There's not much out there in a video form that shows you how to do this. So I'd like to think that this is going to be useful to people. Now, also, something I wanted to tell you about, I'm going to be doing a series of workshops this year. I've already got a whole bunch booked in, and if you head on over to photowalkthrough.com and, and click the workshop link in the corner there, you'll be able to see all of the tutorials I'm running. But there's one particular one I want to draw your attention to. I'm going to be in Barcelona in September for a long weekend. It's going to be a four-day course, I think running Friday to Monday, where we're going to be looking at creativity in shooting and in post-processing, and of course we're going to be working on the photographs that you take in Barcelona, which is a beautiful city, absolutely beautiful. Lots and lots of wonderful architecture, bright colours, interesting people. It's going to be magnificent. I'm really excited about this one. Please join me by coming along to the, the Barcelona Long Creativity Weekend. You can find out more again on the Photo Walkthrough website by clicking on the workshop link in the top bar on the new website. And I'd also like to say a massive thank you to our regular show sponsors, GoDaddy. Remember, we've got changing GoDaddy codes all the time. Check out the latest GoDaddy codes by going to photowalkthrough.com slash GoDaddy. And I'd also like to say a massive thank you to Zazzle, who are supporting us regularly now. Zazzle is a great place for getting your photographs printed on almost anything. Badges, buttons, t-shirts, business cards, posters, uh, bags, aprons, all sorts of things. You can get your, your, your photographs printed 
everywhere. And of course, you can sell those things. You can set up your own store on the Zazzle website, set your own prices, and they will send you the difference between what it costs to make it and what you've charged for it, and then you'll make a little bit of money. So uh, thank you to Zazzle for supporting the show. If you go to Zazzle and you spend more than $50, remember to use the promo code PHOTOWALK123 to get a discount of 10%. If you spend more than $75, use the promo code PHOTOWALK321 to get a 12% discount. Thank you to all our show sponsors. Thank you to you for watching the show as usual. I've got something very exciting coming up for, for Tutorial 19 as well. This is all planned. As I said, I'm really coming back strong here. I want loads of content on the feed. I want loads of content on the website. I want you to keep watching. I want you to enjoy Photo Walkthrough. Please send me feedback at photowalkthrough at gmail.com if you've got anything to say about the new, to new tutorials, the new website, or the new style of the show. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial. All the best. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Please help support the show by using our sponsor's promo codes or by passing the promo codes on to your friends. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. Photocastnetwork.com your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocastnetwork.com <laughs>